Hi there. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to decorate a bookshelf. I'm Erin Valencic, award-winning interior designer and real estate developer based in LA. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to decorate a bookshelf. I'm really excited to show you the before and after so you see the full transformation of this bookshelf. I'll show you how I took this kitchen bookshelf from this to this. Click the link in the description to download the elevation and color palette so you can follow along and take notes with the episode. This is going to help you understand why I chose certain accessories and how you can apply those same decisions when you're decorating your bookshelf. All right, let's get started. When it comes to accessorizing bookcases, you definitely want to make sure you stick to a very consistent color palette. Nothing looks worse than a bookcase with just a bunch of crap thrown on it. P books, colors, family photos, and all kinds of stuff. And you just look at it and you're like, huh. Ah! And then when you really detail down into why does this look kind of a mess is because you have so many colors in there generally. You know, the books are screaming at you, the family photos, nobody's wearing the same kind of shirt color palette, right? Someone's in pink, someone's in green, someone's in yellow. It's like, no wonder it looks a mess. So when you see a really beautifully styled bookcase, study it, right? Even if they are using color, they'll typically stick to one or two colors or they'll mass all the red books together, all the yellow books together, all the green books together, and then it looks really fantastic. So for this bookcase, we wanted to go with a really neutral palette. As you'll see, pretty much everything exclusively in here is white, black, brown, brass. The brown and the brass kind of pulls together as the same color and there's a little bit of gray thrown in as well but very warm grays which ultimately are kind of a, a version of black and white anyway right so ultimately if you look at this from a distance the first two things you see is white and black those are our main colors and then we warmed it up with a little bit of brass a little bit of brown as you go and address each section in a bookcase like this, you want to make things displayed in an interesting way. So you'll see that in certain areas we have books standing up and then we tip some down on the end and maybe put an object on top. Stacking books, widest at the bottom, narrowest at the top is always a good way to go if you can find some that are more similarly sized. And so if you're stacking them like this, there's not a huge one and then a bunch of little ones on top because that looks a little bit funny you can buy them in relation to how they go together. So you wanna make sure that when you're accessorizing your bookshelves, you are really, really, really consistent with your color palette. Uh, you'll notice there are no paperback books on here. Paperback books are not good looking. Don't put them on your bookcase um, unless you want them in an office or somewhere where you really wanna show them off because you love those books. Um, they are not the type of books that come into your living room or your formal spaces. Books are fantastic styling accessories, but you have to think of them as such. So that means, what does the cover look like? If the jacket of the book is too busy or not in the right color palette, take it off. You'll notice that almost all these books do not have their jackets on them because they're actually much prettier without it. And we've grouped them in masses of the same color. So those are some quick tips to make sure that as you style your bookcase, it can turn out as beautifully done as this. Often clients kind of laugh when I say, do you want me to buy you books for your bookcase? Um, some people are like, no, I'm really personal about my books and they must you know, represent me and it has to be something that I want to read. And I'm like, oh, well, that's gonna take a while for us to find pretty books that I think are nice looking enough to be on your bookcase that you also love. So generally, I have them give me a few topics that they really enjoy. Flowers, cars, wrestling, whatever, right? Baseball. And then we go and we find books that have beautiful covers in the topics that they love. And that's how we shop for books is basically by color palette. Um, and again, if it looks good with the jacket on, awesome. If not, we pull the jacket off. If it looks great with the jacket off, then we'll buy the book and we toss the jacket. One thing that you'll see here in this bookcase is a lot of varying height. We've got some really tall, big areas and some shallower areas. So the accessories that you choose need to be in relationship to the space that they're going in. You'll see in the tallest area, we have some taller vases with branches, which take up that visual space. If I'd put some little tiny things in this really tall space, it wouldn't really fill or feel appropriate. 
but the smaller areas can have the smaller objects. And again, we stack them to take up visual space vertically, because if you have a high shelf with one little thing on it, you can't even see it as you look up. So that's why you need to stack the things and then maybe even put an object on top of the books or on top of the box. So that's why you need to stack things so that you're bringing that height so that you're not just looking at the back of the bookcase. Another great way to layer on a bookcase, which you see we've done here in all four of the main sections, is to lean a piece of art against the back. That just instantly brings a lot of warmth, a lot of interest. You know, if there wasn't this piece of photography here, you know, that doesn't look that great. It's just some tchotchkes on a shelf and it feels very naked and empty. So by bringing in a larger piece, it visually takes up space and it adds that height and suddenly it feels more consistent. And then the items that we've chosen to put in front of it, we purposely have the taller items on the sides, kind of flanking it, taking up this space and then the lower object in the middle so that we're not blocking the photography. Um, over here we did the same thing. We purposely kind of chose a smaller piece. It's vintage, it's really cool, it's kind of moody, and then stacked some elements um, mixing up any material we can find in that color palette. So because we were predominantly going with black and white, we went on the hunt for the most interesting dark objects we could find. So everything from kind of an oil rubbed bronze, a metal, um, to the black crystal, you know, it brings in another nice cool texture. And then you'll see the dark books. Now this does kind of break my rule of having the wider books on top. But as you look down on it, which is how you experience this shelf as you look down on it, this book has a really beautiful kind of blue tone to it. Um, you know, if I have the red book showing, it gives it a completely different vibe. If I have the black book showing, suddenly it's all very black and kind of dull. And so this book wins out because it gives you a little bit of color, but it's not really color. Um, it's kind of a soft blue-gray. It feels like the sky, which you see out of all of the windows here. So it just very organically fits in the space. And then when you stand over here, and now I look at this shelf, and I see that pretty bit of color, it warms it up. So you're always gonna be moving these accessories around as you're styling the bookcase. Try this, try that, bigger, smaller, yes, no. Um, it's kind of a lot of work styling bookcases. It's my least favorite thing to do, but when you do it right, it makes the space. So it's important to have way too many objects to start with, and then you just play and play and play and play. It probably would take about two hours to get this right. And sometimes you might not have everything you need. You might know, okay, I need something to go in the back here, or I'm missing something for there. And then you can go out with your shopping list and very specifically grab the items that you need. So for this over here, this is kind of our biggest area, and I love the idea of having these branches, kind of flowers, in the bookcase. Um, these are artificial, but we pick them because they just look really natural, and they always look great. So you don't have to worry about replacing them every week or them dropping flowers everywhere. Um, these are kind of, I think, like a forsythia look. Um, I spread them out, made them a little bit more wild than you know, the way they come out of the box, very vertical and harsh. So if you're gonna go with the artificial flowers, really manipulate those branches so that you get a bit of a natural feel because from a distance, you can't tell that these are artificial. They look great. Um, we did the two uh, matching vases in the different heights and I always like to make sure that if I'm using a pair, that they're never sitting on the same plane you always stagger them a little bit. So this one is pulled out a little bit more than this one. Accessory placement is an ongoing battle in any house. People come over and they clean and they push things to the side and all of a sudden it looks a little bit out of whack. So just practice, you know, practice makes perfect. Um, move this, move that half an inch up, down. It really makes a difference. And then once you get it set just right, I'm sure someone's gonna come by and move it again, and next week you're gonna be you know, tweaking the bookcase again. But um, all those little cues really do matter. Um, here we've got these cool stack of white books, and you know, if you don't see this brass here, it's a little bit too black and white. It just goes a little bit flat. Um, and then as soon as you add one little light pop in a different material, 
I think suddenly it comes to life. It picks up the yellows in here and now that space is done. So as you add and remove, your eye is gonna tell you when it's done. You know, as soon as you add something, you're gonna go, ah, yes, it looks good, and you'll be able to move on to the next. But if it's all one trick, if it's just black and white, um, it's gonna feel really flat and you'd have to work really hard to have great black and white textures to make that come alive. So the third tone, the accent, is always really important. Up here, we've got some really cool kind of chocolate books, layered some on the ends. We've got a black feather. Um, we did a lot of this black pottery and kind of spread that around on the taller shelves, which look nice. Um, we've got some white books over there kind of falling over, a little bit more of a cool organic feel. I really love geodes and crystals for bookcases because they bring some nice organic texture. So we've got one here that very perfectly fits in our color palette. Um, like I said, you've really got to be kind of hard-lined with your bookcase. If someone came and put a purple crystal on here, it's going to make the whole thing just feel kind of funky. So when it comes to color palette, you can have any style, any texture, but your color palette has to stay consistent. As soon as you've got one red book and one purple thing, it's, that's what really starts to ruin it. So be very disciplined, pull those items out, and then look at the space. and. Um, go out and shop for you know, exactly what you need or raid the rest of the house. There's often a lot of good accessories that you might not think are bookcase worthy. Um, sometimes there's even some cool kids toys that can look fantastic on a bookcase because you're stacking and layering and you just need different objects. You know, there could be a little house or there could be some little people or something. I mean, we have paper mache birds on the bookcase, but they bring a great shape. They bring, you know, they're in the right color palette, most importantly. So you can always have fun with the objects that you add in. So another thing you have to think about with a space like this is that you're gonna be here in the evening a lot of time, right? So how do we get this bookcase to light up at night and not just go dark because we don't have perfect spotlights on every single area? So that's where you'll notice all these white candles. They're actually the battery operated candles. So there's, you know, they're very safe and you just go through and you turn them on and suddenly every little area in this bookcase glows and looks really pretty for a party in the evening. Another great styling accessory that we used for this bookcase is the vintage cameras. Um, you'll see there's one up here, there's one over there. Um, if there's any type of kind of uh, hobby or element that maybe the homeowner really enjoys, this gentleman is a photographer, it makes perfect sense to display the vintage cameras. Plus they're just cool looking. Um, so it's always a really nice way to kind of group together collections and sprinkle them through an arrangement like this to make it feel very personal. And it adds that visual interesting layer to your eye where it's not just tchotchkes, it's not just vases and books. Um, you know, you really want to try to layer in the different elements. That's why we have the rocks, we have feathers, we have um, personal elements, we have bowls, we have trays. You know, you really try to get a nice assortment of types of materials and items for a bookcase, especially one that makes such a statement as this. It's a huge area of this room. Um, so I really love the addition of the vintage cameras. You know, even though there's just two of them, if you take them away, it starts to be a little bit less interesting. And so always think about what are those items that you can use to personalize the bookcase and bring that extra little added level of interest to the space. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to like it below and subscribe to my channel. Also click the bell so you know when I post a new episode. Feel free to leave questions or comments. If you're remodeling your kitchen, bath, or interiors, you'll want to check out my courses on airnvdesign.com. Follow me on Instagram at airnvstyle.